Hello, this is Dylan Anderson from Coda Bears. Today I will be covering Epicor REST using OData and BAQ Part 2 in Epicor 10.2.600. So for this demonstration, I went ahead and created a updatable BAQ that we are going to use in the Epicor REST API. And basically, I'm going to show you how to use an updatable BAQ and update data inside of Epicor through that BAQ in the Epicor REST full services. So Real quick here, you can go to the Epicor menu here with this icon, and then it's it's under System Management, Business Activity Queries, and then the Business Activity Query to create your BAQ. I actually already have it opened here. So I went ahead and loaded my uh, updatable BAQ query ID. As you can see here by this checkbox, it is updatable. It is shared and the owning company is Epico 6. In my query builder here, I took the customer table and the customer contact table, picked my display fields, and basically we are going to be updating the customer contact table. And then, I, of course, I tested it, analyzed, and I got syntax is okay. And then for updatable queries, instead of using the test button, you have to use get list. You get a little warning message here. This operation may cause a data update in the database. Do you want to continue? Yes. And so this is pretty much all the fields that I selected. So now let's jump over to our web browser here. And so we're going to navigate to the Epicor REST API here. And to do that in a web browser, you will do HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash. And then it'll be the server name that the Epicor application it runs on itself. In some instances, you may need to do the fully qualified domain name. And you can get with your IT department on help on figuring that out. In my case my server name is dev-10 to 600 and then I would do a forward slash and after the forward slash I then have e10 train which is my uh, instance that I am using the Epicor REST API in. In your case it might be e10 test or e10 prod or e10 pilot depending on what you are working with here and then forward slash API forward slash help will bring you to the help page. Once I loaded just this URL, it added the forward slash v1 forward slash, but you can actually let it default to forward slash uh, v1 just by loading as I described. To get to the version 2, you can click on this link in the upper right hand corner to get to version 2. So here on the Epicor help, uh, REST help page, you have a lot of different information here. This is the first one just kind of gives you some information about the Epicor REST API. You can get and access the business objects, the libraries, the processes, reports. What we're going to be working with today is business activities. So as you can read here, there's a, there's a lot of helpful information. What we're going to be working with in this information is to update a record with a b update BAQ call, we're going to use a patch method. And this patch method, we can kind of get to a better better detail by using this go to the help page of a specific BAQ section. So in my company I'm going to put epic06 and then my query ID and just so you know as you can see there's a drop down that's populating with what BAQs are currently in my system. So I'm going to do LL customer contacts U for my updatable contacts BAQ and then I'll click get help and then here I have get, so this basically just executes the BAQ, so if I wanted to get data back, not necessarily updating data, I can use this section here. I have shown this in a previous Lunch and Learn. And then the next one is patch, which is what we will be working with, which calls an updatable BAQ. So if I click on this, it gives me a little bit more detail, and it also gives me some fields here to enter to test with. So this is a example, an example value. I copied this out into a notepad and deleted all the fields that I didn't think I needed. So for example, I have two kind of data sets here and I'm going to explain them both briefly. But in my first data set, I just took the company, con num, cus num, email address of the, what I wanted to update. And if I go to my BAQ here, I pulled those fields in. So my contact num, my customer num, uh, company, and so on. So this is the record that I am planning on updating with the REST API. The second data set, I'll get there in a moment. So these are all the fields that I thought I needed because as you can see in the example value here, there's all, uh, it pretty much has every field that I have in my BAQ. And I'm not pulling in the Cicero idea row indent or and don't even think I need row mods. So I wipe those out. 
And typically, I, would, I don't think I would need those. So if I copied my, my first data set that I created here and drop it in my input, and then click try it out, just to, this is kind of helping describe how I debug, you know, what am I missing. If I look in the response body, I see name is required. So my second data set here is when I added the name. And just so you know, this is JSON format, and it's the format it, it needs to be in for this input here you can actually change it to an application slash atom plus XML format but that is up to you most things on the web work with JSON so I prefer to kind of stick to JSON so back in my notepad here just to explain the format a little bit so when a JSON file starts or, or the, like a, a data set starts it's always like an opening uh, bracket then the field name is in uh, the quotation marks colon separates the field from the value so this is the value and then comma we put a comma when we're expecting another field in uh, a, a field and value after so as you can see these each have commas but for the last one well we put a comma here but if it's the last one basically we don't add a comma that signifies to the rest API that that is the end of our data set we are not expecting any other fields if you had a comma here and you copy that in there you will get an error so I'm gonna copy my second data well I'm gonna before I copy my second data set I'm gonna change my email address and this is the field that we're updating you can't typically update the condom custom company um, you could probably update the name but if you go back to your BAQ under the update tab this is where we set what's updatable so what's updatable is fax num, phone num, email address those are the only three fields we have set in our updatable BAQ that can be updated so I'll minimize that so I'm gonna change this to I'm just gonna call it Andrew at codebears.com instead of epicor.com if we go back to our data that we got in our BAQ, as you guys can see, it's andrew at epicor.com. We're going to change that value to andrew at codabears.com. And I'm going to copy that data, that JSON data that I created, and put in my import input field here. And then I'll click try it out. When I click try it out, if I scroll down, you do get a response. Basically, the response is the full data set. It does return the row indent and the sysrow ID in this scenario and all my BAQ fields and then also the email address. Seeing that it's andrew.codabears.com here basically tells me that it was successful. If I go back to my BAQ, I'll do a get list as you can see before I do the get list. This we ran this before the this get list before the update. And now we're running it after. And I'll click yes. And then as you can see here it has changed the email address to andrew.codabears.com. That will conclude my Lunch and Learn. Thank you for watching.